Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you very much for coming today. We know this is a very busy afternoon for news, but I have uh, the pleasure to introduce you to the President-elect of the General Assembly for the next session, His Excellency, the Ambassador of Nigeria, Professor Tijani Muhammad Bandi. And he will make some opening remarks and afterwards take your question. Your Excellency, congratulations and welcome. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much for finding time to come and interact with us on this day when the candidate of Africa has been elected to lead the 74th session of the General Assembly. The priorities have been stated in the vision statement and as you have, will have read, they deal with the normal questions of peace and security climate action and the implementation of the SDGs, in particular poverty, poverty eradication, zero hunger, and quality education. And in pursuing all this, we are dealing with this through the prism of inclusion, particularly of women and youth, and with respect to rights as well. Uh, these are really the main issues that are framing the vision statement as has been shared widely in the last few weeks. Uh, I thank you uh, and I will field any questions. Thank you very much. Many member states uh, expressed uh, their hope to uh, enhance the multilateralism. Do you have any plan for it? And one more question is about universal health coverage. Uh, Japan is uh, one of the leading countries uh, to enhance the, the universal health coverage. Uh, what do you expect to the Japan's role in this matter? Thank you. Thank you very much. Do I answer? This? Okay. But I, I think um, relating to multilateralism, we just occasionally need to remind ourselves why the organization was created in the first place uh, in the wake of uh, the horrific events related to the Second World War and also in the failure of an ally effort. And uh, there was an effort culminating in San Francisco of the establishment of this very important organization. And it just reminds people that a lot has been done for humanity by this organization. It sets moral standards. It is able to help all countries. It has given a platform for people to, to do really important things because a lot of problems cannot be solved through national efforts alone. And when you remind people about this, there are occasional difficulties, but I think leaders as leaders will see the necessity to have this organization and it's to now work harder to have delegations to, 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 to come back to the issue that it is important to solve and we can solve our problems collectively together. I think this is really the approach to continue to be patient in negotiations and to not take our eyes off the ball. The ball is guaranteeing international peace and security and development for all. Now, the question of universal health coverage is important because it's, it's not only one of the goals, it's a key goal, the, rela the importance of health as one of the uh, SDGs cannot be overemphasized. And uh, there will be, uh, in the first week of the assembly, uh, celebration of that effort it, it is an important high-level event, and a lot of countries are looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Mr. President-elect. Uh, my name is Ahmed Fadhi for uh, ATN News. Uh, you are the Africa candidate for the PJE position. Africa is a, a huge uh, display of problems, whether it's uh, security, whether it's uh, development, whether it's healthcare, education, science. What is your top three priorities dealing with these uh, striped files uh, in the continent? 
Well, I think I state that Africa has a problems just like has its problems just like all countries and all regions. And remember the issue relating to SDGs. SDGs are about the entire effort of the global community for transformation. And for Africa, as you know, uh, in the last decade, some of the conflicts that are discussed in the Council, in the Security Council, relate to the continent. But of course, others also are implicated in what is happening there. But for Africa, peace and security are urgent. So is climate action, because some of the conflicts we have experienced have been driven also by climate issues. Uh, so these are really the priority issues, plus, of course, poverty eradication. Uh, these are really the three top priorities for the continent. And uh, these are also well captured in the vision statement, and it's also something that other delegations outside the continent think are important. Thank you. Congratulations, Mr. President. My name is Sherman Bryceby, South African Broadcasting. Uh, Africans in particular are very concerned, if you listen to member states, when they come to the high-level meeting in September, they, they talk about the reform of the Security Council. How are you going to move this critical issue to Africans forward at the General Assembly? We don't hear much about it in the conversations we have with diplomats here, so how are you going to make this a priority in your term? And the second question, sir, if you could explain why your entourage behind you is all male. I don't see a single woman standing behind you. What message does that send, given the women's agenda that we have at this, at this organization? Thank you very much. I think uh, two things. One, related to Security Council. Security Council uh, reform had been something that kicked off 25, 20, 27, 28 years ago. Now, we started with the, the open-ended working group. Uh, it transformed into, some 10 years later, into the IGN. The IGN uh, has not moved, as I've explained, as fast as we had wanted to. But certain things are clear. No delegation thinks it is fair to continue without a reform of the Security Council. Negotiations are continuing, and they will continue. We'll try to hasten those negotiations in the spirit of fairness, also in the spirit that an organization 25 years later needs to, 70 years later, 73 years later, uh, cannot continue to talk the same language that it spoke about 50 years ago, 20, 70 years ago, when heads of state and government have said this was important. We are making progress in that. For the, for the continent, there is a consensus. But you don't reform the Security Council only for one group. It is a consensus element involving member states. Progress is being made. We'll continue to push this. And at some point, we certainly will get to the point where the Security Council will be more democratic and more efficient. Now, agenda concerning women. I assure you, it's simply by coincidence. From my office, we were sitting and chatting after a prayer, and then we decided to come, and they wanted to follow me. So uh, that is the only reason. Uh, that, 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 that's the only reason. So uh, you, 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 are, you, you are assured that uh, in the President of the General Assembly's office, you'll see a balance. We try to have a balance, not 20, not two thirds and one third. It will be a balanced uh, uh, team. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Mr. President. And uh, this is Yuan from Xinhua News Agency of China. And you mentioned that one of your most important areas you are going to focus is on the quality education. And uh, do you have anything on your mind, like uh, what kind of measures you're going to take and what goal do you have? OK. I think uh, just to remind colleagues that Nigeria, as a delegation, led the effort to have an International Day of Education with the support of Ireland, Norway, the, everyone supported it. In fact, there was not a single delegation that didn't think uh, it was right to have gotten an International Day of Education, being 24th of January of each year. Now, that tells you we have always taken education as a key element. And our issues uh, relating to education are because 
without education, nothing else really happens. Now, whether you see, whether you're dealing with access, whether you're dealing with uh, primary education, technical education, education is something that liberates. And the very idea we have with, with POC, whether of technical education or uh, access to education, any, everything related to education is important. What you need to do is each year let us focus on something important. Even one country can say for this year this is what we want to achieve and then measure that there is progress because there is a lot in education. Of course, uh, given that I've been a teacher most of my life, uh, uh, what is important, central to this is teacher education. And we want to make sure that teachers are able to go to other countries learn. Teachers are able to see what systems operate elsewhere. They, we learn, we exchange information, we use ICT. Whatever can be done to improve education in terms of not only what is offered, but the content and also how it is also offered. So education is key. There are a lot of things we can deal with relating to education, but each year something will happen. For the presidency, we are dealing with, of course, access. Access is key. There are certain places where even primary or basic education is a challenge. We have stated in this century there is no excuse for anyone not to go to school. We can afford to guarantee education for all. That's what we want to remind ourselves. It's a commitment. It's an important commitment, and it has implications. This is what we really wanted to raise. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Abazi, and then Stefano, Georgia. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, Mr. President-elect, for this uh, presentation. My name is Abadi. I'm from the paper Le Dossier. Congratulations and best wishes in your mission. Thank you. You have a rich experience in the field of diplomacy and uh, in the academic world. Among the many roles you have played was one of director of CAFRAD in Tangier. Can you tell us what that institute is and how important it is for the African countries? Well, uh, I wasn't told I have one hour to talk, but uh, Kafrad is, is dear to my heart. Kafrad was established in the early 1960s, principally when African countries were just getting independence from the various colonial powers. And Africa decided, as Africa, to find means to better administer development. Administration, it used to be development administration was a key issue. And the continent decided, regardless of language, we as Africans should learn from each other. And uh, the Kingdom of Morocco gave the headquarters in a beautiful place called Rabat. And Kafrad, from then to this time, continues to train directors relating to public administration or public management, uh, regardless of language. And this is really an important center. It publishes studies, uh, it trains teachers, uh, it trains administrators, and uh, it's, it's the premier institute on the continent dealing with development administration, as it used to be called, which now we call governance generally. It is an important center, and this is the value of Kafrad in the 60s. It's still continuing. Thank you. Congratulations. Um, Stefano Vaccara, La Voce di New York, Radio Radicale in Rome. Um, I have a question about uh, just on Monday, last Monday, a group of lawyers denounced on the International Criminal Court the European Union, the policy of the European uh, Union toward migrants as a crime against humanity. I would like to know what do you think as an African and as a new president of the General Assembly, if the European policy at the moment of the EU toward migration is a crime against humanity? Well, I, I, I am not a lawyer, and I have not really studied the legal implications for the issues you are talking about. But I do know that in this assembly, the United Nations have taken a very clear view through its uh, global compact on migration. It's a very important negotiated compact which deals with migration, whether you are dealing with origin, whether you're dealing with transit, whether you're dealing with destination. The very idea of migration in the context of economic development, in the context of rights, I think these this are key. And 
within that compact, we have rules of, we have mechanisms of monitoring to see what policy works, what doesn't work. After, after five years, there will be a mechanism to review. There's a mechanism to review. And I think as a negotiated document, I think a lot has been achieved by the compact. Very few countries have objected to it, uh, really very few. And even those who have objected are not completely rejecting every element of that document. I think in relation to, in relation to migration, let us stick with the global compact, and I think uh, we will we'll, 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 we'll make headway. Thank you. Mr. President-elect John Metzler, WorldTribune.com. I'm just curious, as the candidate of Africa, what special focus will you have on the Sahel, and especially parts of your own country, that have been victim of appalling violence and indeed poverty? And what kind of focus are we going to be putting on Sahel, not just Nigeria, but other countries as well? Well, I have, I have, I have addressed the matter in an earlier comment, but the Sahel is a combination of environment and terror. And uh, which are which are compound problems, each of its own, but put together with the tragic situation in Libya, where arms became easier to get, uh, the matter became difficult. It's a difficult terrain, but there is already a strategy. The United Nations is dealing with G5 Sahel strategy. Uh, it's being refined, and it's an open space. Uh, so, in the case of Nigeria, you are dealing more of the Lake Chad region. Already, not only are global efforts strong there, but the, the, the efforts by the countries themselves, through the support also of the United Nations and other partners, has really brought the matter to a situation where we, we are seeing the end of the situation. But again, the point to make is to remember there is no national terrorism Everything now is global in the sense people learn bad things from, from others and they can also learn good things from others and uh, it's col collaboration that really is key. Uh, certainly the issue of Sahel uh, is, is, is a bad situation but again it's a global effort that is being deployed and uh, uh, we are sure it will actually end. Thank you. Thank you, George. Uh, thank you. Uh, George Baumgarten, uh, correspondent for various international media including especially uh, the uh, Astana Times in Kazakhstan. Okay. Uh, I notice in your, uh, congratulations on your election, Mr. President-elect. I notice in your biography you've been very much involved in uh, efforts in your country, I guess in the Northeast, uh, to remedy the situation in Lake Chad. Have you been involved at all, or uh, uh, do you know anything about similar efforts in Central Asia uh, to remedy the situation in the RLC, uh, and you think this should find its way onto the agenda of your 74th session? Uh, there are discussions concerning the RLC that are already starting here. I do not know how far they have gone, but Kazakhstan and others have started raising issues like this. Certainly, the death of rivers and seas is a fundamental issue that the system globally needs to, needs to address. And I think there are connections between, between that and our situation in terms of the shrinkage of lake rivers and the environment. I think that's really key to come. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, congratulations. My name is Shauna McGee from Kyoto News. And you addressed my colleague's question about the need for Security Council reform. And it's a consensus-driven process, and it's been many, many years in the making. What specifically will you bring in terms of a vision during your presidency when you take up office in September? And what do you hope to see accomplished on this very difficult, contentious issue during your term? Thank you. Okay. Well, we, we have just gotten a draft IGN report. We'll study it. And uh, from, the, from the report, we'll see what the most difficult areas are. And already some delegations are beginning to make their own input concerning how, how, to, how to improve the draft as, as a draft. Uh, so for us is to continue to remind and for delegations that are further apart to see whether we can continue to narrow the differences so that we can say within a few years we can see light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, 
uh, it is important that we, we, we have something that we can all see is an improvement over the current situation, which is untenable. We have to have the reform. It is a democratic process, and uh, I think we just continue not to lose sight of the goal, which is to have fair, just, and quick reforms. And uh, this is the, these are the three elements. Thank you. Okay, okay one last question, and it is a kind of a trick question with one leg still as a PR of uh, Nigeria and one leg as president-elect. Uh, Sudan, uh, over the past 48 hours, unfortunately, there were uh, some uh, excessive use of violence against peaceful protesters mm. that led to killing uh, of several of uh, unarmed uh, citizens. Uh, do you have a, any remark or comment uh, with in your national capacity and or with your uh, PGA-elect capacity in that regard? And as, as peer of Nigeria, we defer to the AU and we'll wait for the AU to make a determination as best way forward. The AU has made clear statement concerning the situation of the position of AU concerning unconstitutional changes of government and the AU has been clear as to what steps need to, to be taken. We'll now have to wait until we see the AU do this. And of course, from the position of the UN, uh, we know there is a strong partnership between the AU and the UN concerning peace and security matters. I'm sure there is a discussion. We will see what that discussion is. But the AU is taking lead on this. We will wait for this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. And uh, happy tomorrow. Good holidays. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you. 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 Thank